Hi, I'm Scott Overholt and welcome to SOS Kettlebell Online. This video is part two of our mobility series. In this video, we'll cover uh, the shoulders and the thoracic cage. So all of these are mobility drills that you want to do to improve the strength and the mobility for the shoulders and the thoracic cage. Um, both the shoulders and uh, your thoracic cage, which your thoracic cage is everything that sits on top of your ribs. So it's your, your chest, your back, um, your rhomboids, and your lat muscles. Those are the muscles that we're going to be uh, focusing on um, rebuilding, reclaiming, or um, getting back to work with those muscles. So what we want to do is start with shoulder rolls. Just like on the neck exercises, we want to stand nice and straight and tall. You want to get your feet lined up underneath your hips. And with the shoulder rolls, you want to make sure that you let your arms hang. You don't want to keep flexed biceps with these, but we want to use the muscles in the upper center back. So you want to lift them and drop them. So your lats, the big muscles on the side of your armpits or underneath the, the armpits there, those are what you're going to be using quite a bit. You want to activate all of those muscles. As we sit, which we all sit a lot, cars, um, couches, school work, these muscles will start to atrophy. So it's important that we, we get these muscles reconditioned and um, pull us back into posture. We want our shoulders back and down quite a bit. So 10 each direction is a, a great for a warm up, but to get, um, and if you need to, which most people do, but to get benefit from these, you've got to do high repetitions of them, especially if you're not very good at them, if you have a, a weak upper back or sit a lot. So, we're going to start with shoulder rolls each direction. After that, we're going to alternate with them. So you're going to lift and drop. You want to make sure that you open and close the ribs. Your legs stay nice and tight with these. You want to squeeze the glutes together. Keep your feet right underneath your hips. Inhaling through the nose, out through the lips. So get as much range of motion as you can. We're going to go both directions with this. After our alternating shoulder rolls, we'll do what's called a thoracic lift. So we're going to lift the shoulder blades, or uh, lift the chest rather, the sternum up, and your shoulders are going to be back and down. So we want to engage those lats. You can look up, that can be helpful. And then we want to push those shoulders out, spread the upper back, and you can drop your shoulders as well. So you can do these slowly at first. Another one where you don't want to flex your biceps or move your arms a lot. You want all the movement to be in the center of the back and the center of the sternum. So we're closing and opening, reconditioning those upper back muscles in order to take a lot of stress off of the lower back muscles. So we get a lot of thoracic lifting in if we need it. And then the next one's gonna be a thoracic glide. This is uh, difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people don't have the coordination developed to do this, but in order to uh, get a good thoracic glide, you've got to engage your upper abdominals and you've got to relax the lower back muscles. So what it involves is shifting your sternum over to one hip and then on over to the other side. So your legs stay tight. Once again, the glutes and the quads are tight and we're just shifting that sternum using that same side oblique, push it on over. You've got to let that lower, uh, I'm sorry, abdominal, you've got to let that lower back release on these. So push with the oblique, let the lower back relax. So good breathing on these. For me, I do these all the time because I have a tight lower back uh, quite often and these are very helpful in, in loosening my back up. So do these as much and as often as needed. So after our thoracic glides, we'll go into some arm swings. You wanna warm the lats and the delts up with these. Another one, you don't want your wrists or elbows to bend. Most importantly, because we use these to warm up with kettlebell training or for kettlebell lifts, when you press a bell overhead, you want to keep your wrist and your elbow right over your shoulder at your lockout. That, that completes your press, it completes your range of motion in your, in your overhead work. So when we're doing our arm swings, don't let your wrists or elbows bend. We're going overhead with them and then back down. You want to do these pretty, pretty uh, quickly. Don't let your rest of your body swing around. When you get overhead with these, you can check your shoulders, pack your lats, pull them down, and let them drop. But don't let those wrists or elbows bend. So a couple of arm swings, and then we go into an alternating cross. Michael Phelps does this before his races. 
alternating crosses. I like to let my palms expand, spread my fingers out as much as I can. So I open up all the, uh, the flexors in the wrist and the uh, nerve endings at your palms. I don't do too many of these, but it's a pretty good stretch for the chest, uh, the hands, wrists, forearms, biceps. Then we go into shoulder screws. Shoulder screws are a tough exercise for a lot of people. We start in the T stretch with these. So open up the palms, expand the pinky, the thumb, let everything in those palms, forearms, biceps open up. And it involves internal into external rotation through the shoulder. So you're really folding that, that uh, deltoid over that pec line. So this is the first part of it. You're getting one shoulder to screw, the other arm staying on a straight line. So you can see how pretty, how difficult that can be. When you do this, you also have a second point of uh, uh, pivoting on your toe. So you're hitting external rotation through your hip as well. So we've got that same side shoulder, internal, external, that same hip turning out with the heel, and then exhale and bring the two together while this other arm is up. Inhale, get into your T stretch, pull your shoulders back and down, lift your chest. Now we're gonna to go to the other side. So simultaneously, that shoulder's gonna screw in the socket and we're looking for alignment here of shoulder over hip. Exhale, inhale, pull them down, lift your chest, exhale. It's helpful to make a fist here sometimes. Inhale, check your alignment, exhale. So really concentrate on improving these because they are worth improving. It's a good, good exercise to practice, a good strength exercise. So after our shoulder screws, we're gonna go into lateral bending, which is more of a stretch. Um, Maybe not, but we want to work into um, higher repetitions on these because lateral flexibility or mobility is kind of the first thing that, that we begin to lose as we age. So you want to pay attention to alignment of your ear, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle. I'll keep them kind of in the same line. Let your head hang. You're pushing your weight away. So when you're standing upright, I'm going to push my weight into my right foot, then into my right hip and I'm gonna bend over my left knee, which should be bent forward a little bit, and I'm just gonna hang and stretch here. Breathe, relax. Come upright, go to the other side, and bending over that weightless leg, let my head hang, relax. So first we wanna establish how far we can go, get the full range of motion, and then breathe and relax down into each one, and I kinda of just bend and hang. For me, it gets right down into the uh, lower part of my um, abdominals, upper part of my hips. So that's going to be our uh, thoracic, uh, our shoulder and thoracic mobility warm-up. Um, so practice those. Um, our next video is going to be part three of the mobility. It's going to be our lumbar posterior chain, and that's going to tie everything up as far as our uh, mobility series. So as always, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to email or uh, drop a line at SOS Kettlebell. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you.